Hello everyone, I am Prabhat Kumar. I am a postdoc in the Center for Computational Sciences and Engineering in the Applied Mathematics and Computational Research Division. I'm excited to share some of my research with you all today. I work on uh, modeling and simulations of electromagnetic devices. And in this talk today, I will uh, focus on exascale modeling of electromagnetic devices with applications to microelectronics and uh, particle accelerators. Let me begin with a quick review of conventional devices and their limitations and why we need the next generation of electromagnetic devices. Conventional methods for accelerating charged particles for high energy physics applications such as colliders requires devices which are huge in size. For example, the large Hadron Collider at CERN has a circumference of 27 kilometers and with a large size comes a huge cost of building and operating these devices. Thankfully, plasma-based accelerators offer a promising solution. The concept of laser plasma acceleration was first proposed a few decades ago, where the idea is to use electromagnetic fields of lasers and plasmas to accelerate charged particles such as, such as electrons or ions to relativistic energies. These devices would be orders of magnitude smaller and um, um, much cheaper. On the other hand, it is well known that information technology represents the fastest growing energy consumer in the world. Traditionally, the challenges of energy consumption by uh, microelectronics has been addressed by shrinking the transistor dimensions, but that process has significantly slowed down and no longer follows the famous Moore's law. We are part of a larger DOE microelectronics co-design team where we have proposed to enable energy efficient computing by exploring correlated phenomena in materials uh, such as uh, electronic spin or negative capacitance effects in ferroelectric materials. When it comes to accurately modeling these devices, we need to capture small scale features which is made more challenging due to the multi-scale nature of the uh, problem. To emphasize this multi-scale nature of the problem, let us look at the space and time disparity uh, of the waves that we consider in our simulations. Um, for example, electromagnetic waves propagating in different media respond to the material in which they are propagating, and they differ dramatically in their space and the time dimensions. In some cases, for example, when we model spintronic devices, we need to consider the interaction between electromagnetic waves and spin waves. The spin waves um, uh, have a speed which is orders of magnitude smaller than the speed of electromagnetic waves. So in order to self-consistently resolve these interactions, we need advanced algorithms and a high performance computing uh, capabilities. In our group, we are developing three different codes for modeling different electromagnetic devices. These codes uh, all utilize the AMRX library, but are distinct in terms of the physics uh, that they target. The first code that I contribute to is the electromagnetic particle in cell code called WARPX. This code solves the Vlasov-Maxwell system of partial differential equations, where we study the interaction between electromagnetic fields of the laser pulse and plasmas and interaction with uh, particles uh, for modeling of plasma-based particle accelerators. This code is also used in other applications, but it was initially developed for modeling of plasma-based accelerators. We adapt many of these code's features, uh, such as the macroscopic Maxwell equation solver uh, into the new code called Artemis, which is used for modeling microelectronic uh, devices. And we couple the macroscopic Maxwell solver with some additional physics of magnetic materials, for example. The third code that I'm going to talk uh, about in this presentation today uh, can be considered as an electrostatic module of Artemis. We started developing this uh, just a couple of months ago for modeling ferroelectric um, field effect transistors. So in this case, instead of solving the full Maxwell's equation in Artemis, we solve the Poisson's equation together with ginzburg landau model for ferroelectric materials. That equation uh, describes the, the evolution of polarization in ferroelectric materials. And we couple that with semiconductor charge transport equation to model a uh, full device. And all these equations need to be solved simultaneously and uh, self-consistently. So in this presentation, I'll go um, over all three of these codes, give an overview of each and share some results from our ongoing work on modeling electromagnetic devices using these codes. 
Um, so let's begin with the first code. The first code is the electromagnetic particle in cell code Warpex. It is an advanced particle in cell code which combines multi-physics modeling capabilities with advanced numerical features such as mesh refinement, uh, boosted frames, and uh, dynamic uh, load balancing, etc. It also contains multiple solvers for solving the Maxwell's equation. Uh, some solvers are based on finite difference time domain technique and the other utilize uh, spectral solvers uh, such as PSATD. Um, this code now supports 1D, 2D, and 3D Cartesian geometry and RZ cylindrical geometry. The 1D support was recently added, and it was my first contribution slash learning experience with Warpex AMRX framework. Before I go into application of this code, let me quickly describe what an electromagnetic particle in code does. In EMP codes, we represent plasma with a number of macro particles or super particles and discretize the Maxwell's equation on a grid. These macro particles are moved following the electric and magnetic field of Maxwell's equation and uh, uh, following the newton lorentz uh, equations of motion. And the charge and current density of these particles are deposited onto the mesh where uh, we use a field solver uh, to calculate or solve uh, the uh, Maxwell's equation. Once the field quantities are known, we interpolate those to the location of the macro particles and move the particles again using those fields. Uh, many of the applications that we target using Warpex um, results in highly non-uniform distribution of particles. And therefore, adaptive mesh refinement features are highly desirable for efficient and accurate modeling. Uh, let us look at the case of laser plasma accelerators. In this case, an ultra short laser pulse propagates through a low density plasma and uh, uh, triggers plasma oscillations. So the red uh, color you see here uh, at the front of this figure is the laser pulse. And behind the laser pulse, we see this yellow and blue regions, which is the electric field generated by uh, this interaction. And this electric field is, is, is extremely high and it can trap and uh, accelerate charged particle in the plasma wake. These uh, trapped particle size are shown by this white uh, dots. And these uh, charged particles when trapped and accelerated can, can gain energy, which is uh, relativistic. And the basic physics of this process is very well understood and uh, multi giga electron volts uh, beam have been produced by these devices. However, the challenge in the field uh, now is to understand the process, uh, processes associated with controlled injection and propagation of these electron beams into the wake. These beams usually have a small transfer size and can produce high electric fields on their own inside the bubble. And these fields can cause ions to move significantly. Uh, usually ions are much heavier than electrons and they are uh, less reactive to the electric field uh, generated in these cases. Our goal is to simulate this ion motion using mesh refinement feature inside the bubble uh, where the white rectangle is shown here in this case. We are testing many AMR features that have already been implemented in Warpex and we are making improvements when needed to perform these type of uh, simulations. Let us look at one uh, set of results that we have recently obtained. The top row has been obtained without the mesh refinement feature. So we, we uh, have a fine resolution everywhere in the computational domain. And as you can imagine, it is very expensive. I'm showing the plasma uh, bubble structure that is the charge density plot on the left-hand side. The electric field, uh, easy, the longitudinal electric field, which is used to accelerate the electrons in the middle panel. And on the right hand side, I'm showing the ion density plot. This is what ion motion is what we are interested in looking at. Um, on the second row, I'm showing simulation with a coarse grid with a fine patch around the region of interest, which I showed using the white rectangle um, in the previous slide. And it is shown here as well. And as you can see, we can reproduce the results uh, qualitatively using mesh refinement with subcycling. But there are some uh, numerical artifacts that we can see in the ion density plot here inside the fine patch. And this is uh, something that we are working uh, to resolve. 
The second category of electromagnetic devices that we want to model are microelectronic devices. We have developed this code called Artemis, which is based on AMRX and WARPX. This code bridges the gap between material physics and uh, circuit uh, modeling. Um, and this code uh, runs is massively parallel and it runs on CPUs and, uh, and the GPUs. Let us look at some of the mathematical details uh, of the code Artemis and why we needed a new code um, instead of using Warpix for this purpose. So for uh, microelectronic modeling uh, that we are interested in, we need macroscopic Maxwell's equation solver, which propagates in, in different media. And we need to couple that equation with another set of equation, which describes the evolution of magnetization. This equation is the landau lipschitz gilbert or the LLG equation. So we solve these two set of partial differential equations, macroscopic Maxwell's equation and the LLG equations uh, simultaneously. If you look at the right-hand side of the LLG equation, the first term, H effective, contains a sum of different uh, magnetic fields. This H comes from the solution of Maxwell's equation. Then in addition to that, we have bias field, an, is an isotropy field, and the exchange uh, coupling field. Our recent effort has been uh, to incorporate the exchange field term in Artemis. This would be key to modeling spintronic devices. This exchange field is given by the equations shown here, which contains the Laplacian of magnetization M. Uh, so in order to simulate a block of magnetic material inside our simulation domain, we have implemented pinned and free boundary conditions at the interface between the magnetic material and uh, uh, vacuum, for instance. As a validation of our implementation of exchange physics term, we studied the excitation of perpendicular standing spin waves in gig films. Uh, the red curve here uh, in, the, in this figure here shows the input microwave magnetic field, which excites the spin waves uh, when asymmetric boundary conditions are used across the thickness of the egg film. And the blue curve here uh, shows the final spectrum of magnetization, where the location of these small peaks that you see are the uh, higher order modes. And the location of these peaks matches um, quite well with theoretically predicted frequencies by the dispersion relation for uh, perpendicular standing spin waves. The third and final electromagnetic device that we are studying is the field effect transistor or FETs. FETs can be characterized by this term called subthreshold swing denoted by S here, which basically represents the amount of gate voltage swing required to cause a decade change in the current. If you look at the expression for S, its value cannot be smaller than 60 millivolts per decade for positive values of capacitances, right? So this is called this, the so-called Boltzmann tyranny. This um, idea of using a negative capacitance effect of ferroelectrics was proposed by Salauddin and Datta in 2008, where they, where they proposed to use a layer of ferroelectric material in the gate stack uh, of, of field effect transistors. To model these kind of devices, one needs to solve the ginsburg landau model for ferroelectric polarization in this layer. And the Poisson's equation, which describes the uh, potential distribution across the device, uh, 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 across the gate stack. And semiconductor charge transport equation, which describes the electron and hole concentration, which would give the charge density distribution inside the semiconductor region. The modeling tools that are currently available either in uh, industry or in academia are either 2D or use some kind of approximation such as thrift diffusion model to um, uh, model the semiconductor uh, region, uh, for instance. We are developing a full uh, 3D uh, phase field modeling capability using AMRX framework uh, to model ferroelectric based field effect transistors. And we plan to incorporate Boltzmann transport model for semiconductor uh, region. We recently completed our validation study by comparing some of our results with existing 2D model described in this uh, scientific report paper uh, from uh, 2020 by uh, Sahai and Gupta from Purdue University. And I'm showing the dis 
uh, distribution of polarization on the first plot and uh, the distribution of potential in the second plot in a uh, gate stack of negative capacitance field effect transistor. And as you can see, we are able to reproduce uh, both these results using our 3D model. For this work, we used material properties which are extracted from the PE curve shown here on the right hand side. But we are working with our collaborators from Molecular Foundry to obtain these parameters from either first principle calculations or experiments as a part of the DOE microelectronics co design team. Um, finally, I want to emphasize the need for a 3D model by showing a result from our full 3D simulation. As you can see, the polarization evolved from an initial random distribution to these meandering patterns um, on the surface of the ferroelectric film. These surface effects um, are important to quantitatively ca characterize these devices, and they cannot be captured using uh, 2D models. With that, I would like to conclude. We are developing different modeling and the simulation tools for different electromagnetic devices. We are improving the mesh refinement features in Warpex to capture small scale uh, features in laser plasma acceleration simulations. We are extending the capabilities of Artemis code to simulate spintronic devices. And we are developing a new 3D modeling framework for ferroelectric field effect, uh, field effect transistors. So right now the the, the 3D phase field modeling is, is a separate code, but we plan to integrate it as, a, a, as an electrostatic module of code Artemis in near future. Moving forward, we would like to perform multi-stage laser plasma accelerator simulations using mesh refinement feature in, in Warpix. We are getting closer to modeling full MISO devices using uh, Artemis. And we plan to incorporate Boltzmann transport model for semiconductor charge equations in our 3D phase field uh, framework. The results that I presented today, we used a Fermi Dirac distribution function with Boltzmann approximation to, um, to get the electron and hole concentration to calculate the charge density in the semiconductor region. But in some cases, especially when uh, the, uh, the channel size is small, uh, there are some short channel effects which cannot be uh, accurately captured by this approximation and we need full um, Boltzmann transport model uh, for to capture those kind of effects. So that's our uh, near future plan. Finally, I would like to uh, acknowledge our collaborators and teammates for all their help and support. We work uh, closely with the entire AMRX team and the Warpix team. Uh, many people contribute to these codes and uh, due to space limitations, I was not able to include all of them, but thank you uh, goes to all the contributors of AMRX and uh, Warpix. The, I also want to thank everyone in the microelectronics team for regular uh, discussion and help with all the technical stuff, stuff and our collaborators from uh, other uh, divisions at the lab uh, and uh, UC Berkeley. Thank you. With that, I would conclude and uh, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions um, or if you want further details in any of the, on any of the topics uh, that was presented in this talk today. Thank you.